Welcome to yet another new series here on the Kowabana channel. So far, we've looked at various incidents, strange happenings, crimes, and even urban legends from various periods of Japanese history. But we haven't looked at too many from the Meiji era, which ran from 1868 to 1912, the era that came just before the Taisho era. The Meiji era, of course, is a fascinating time in Japanese history, and considered by many to be the point where Old Japan ended and Modern Japan began. It saw Japan move from a closed, pre-industrial society ruled by the Tokugawa shogunate to an industrialized world power, once again ruled by the emperor. But we're not here for a history lesson on the Meiji era as a whole. As with other series, here we'll be looking at particular incidents from the Meiji era, such as strange crimes, bizarre incidents, terrifying urban legends whispered on the wind, and much more. So settle in as we take a look at yet another fascinating period of Japanese history. And to kick this series off, we're looking at something known as the Liver Stealing Katsutaro Incident. For this one, we're going all the way back to 1905, well over 100 years ago now. There was a small settlement in Nagano Prefecture known as Asahi Village. This tiny village sat along the Tenryu River, and although it wasn't massively large, it was growing. So much so that a new station on the National Railway, Tatsuno Station, was under construction that would connect the village to the rest of the country. This meant that there were numerous outsiders coming and going from the village, as they aimed to complete the station by November that same year. At any rate, on September 1st of that year, a large festival was held at the Asahi Village Shrine. Even today, these festivals are always large events that bring the community together, but back in the day, these types of large events only happened once or twice a year, so they were the perfect excuse for all the villagers to head out and party. Yet, while the Asahi villagers were celebrating their autumn festival, a 16-year-old girl who worked at the local liquor store went missing. Initially, the villagers didn't think much of the girl's disappearance. After all, it was a big festival and everyone was making merry. It didn't seem that odd that a young woman might go missing for a few days while she went out to have fun. But several days passed, and then a few more, and still the girl didn't come home. It wasn't until September 10th, nine days after the festival, that they finally found her. She was dead lying in a rice field between Asahi and the neighbouring village. Horrifically, her lower torso had also been slashed and it was, to say the least, not a pretty sight. It also appeared that her liver was missing. What on earth happened to her? Initially, police focused their investigation on the station construction workers, thinking it likely that an outsider had done the deed, but they also interviewed locals as well and did their best to cover all their bases. Yet, their investigations turned up nothing. It seemed that nobody knew what happened to her that night, nor how she ended up in a rice field, missing her liver. Two months passed, and then on November 3rd, 1905, a second woman went missing from the village. November 3rd was a big day in Asahi. Not only was it Emperor Meiji's birthday, in and of itself a massive event, but the Tatsuno station had also finished construction and officially opened on this day as well. The nation was also coming off the high of Japan's win in the Russo-Japanese War, which had ended shortly after the first girl's disappearance, just two months earlier. And so, it was yet another massive day that everyone came out to celebrate. Drinking and partying lasted well into the night, despite the weather rapidly getting cooler. But by the next morning, villagers realised that a 30-year-old woman from the local silk mill had gone missing. This woman was famous around the village as the most beautiful woman in Asahi, so her disappearance was quickly noticed, and then her body was shortly thereafter found, a few kilometres outside the village on a small road near the Tendu River. As with the previous incident, her liver was missing. Panic quickly swept through the village and they realised they potentially had a serial killer on their hands. 
Yet once again, police were unable to dig up any suspects. They were left with zero clues as to who may have done this, or why. Two women from the same village, with the same cause of death, only two months apart. Naturally, the villagers feared that any of them might be next. Yet days passed, and then weeks, and then months. No further victims emerged, and the villagers started to forget about what had happened. By June the following year, Tatsuno Station was officially in full swing and all of the construction workers now gone. But the terror wasn't yet over. In August, almost one year after the first incident, three bodies were discovered in a small hut on the banks of Tendu River. A 27-year-old woman, her newborn, and their 17-year-old helper. As with the previous two attacks, both women were missing their livers. The mysterious liver thief had struck again, and panic quickly spread through the village anew. Some villagers believed it to be a curse from the gods, while others feared that their wives or daughters would be next. Rumours spread that the spirits of those slain were now haunting the area at night, their bodiless heads grinning at men as they passed. Police ramped up their investigations and came to the conclusion that it had to be a villager. All of the outsiders had long gone, and yet more bodies were piling up. They also couldn't help but notice that the women were all missing their livers, which likely meant one thing. Someone was selling them on the black market. At the time, it was believed that the human liver could help with diseases such as pneumonia and tuberculosis, and it was also an important ingredient in various herbal medicines as well. Therefore, the police came to believe that these murders weren't merely the product of some sicko who couldn't control his urges, but rather of someone who was after money. But even with this in mind, they were no closer to uncovering a suspect. Then, in January 1907, five months after the previous incident, yet another woman went missing, this time a 48-year-old. She had reportedly left to visit her parents' house for the new year, but over a month had passed and nobody had seen her. Nagano, of course, is a rather mountainous area with incredibly cold winters, so this hampered search efforts at the time. It wasn't until nearly two months later, in late February, that the woman's body was found in a quarry a few kilometres outside the village. Of course, her liver was missing as well. In just over a year, five women from the same village had been killed under the same circumstances. There was no denying that they were related, and yet police still had no suspects. Whoever it was, they attacked when no one else was around, and thus there were no witnesses, nor any evidence left behind. But as you would expect, the villagers were outraged that police had yet to find even a single suspect, and they protested so much that the police chief was ousted and a new chief installed. A curfew for women was also put into effect that banned women from being outside at night in an attempt to stop further crimes from happening. For the immediate time being, matters in Asahi village once again calmed down. Little did they know, however, that it was all about to come to an unceremonious end. At 11pm on August 13th, almost two years after the first attack, a 32-year-old woman was walking outside when a man attacked her from behind. He wrapped a towel around her neck, and the woman, realising she was about to die, reportedly grabbed the man's crotch and squeezed with all her might. This was enough for the man to loosen his grip, and in the moonlight, the woman finally saw who he was. Ah, you're Katsutaro from the water mill. When the man heard his name and realized he'd been recognized, he fled the scene immediately. The woman went straight to the police, and the very next day, Baba Katsutaro, 30, owner of the local water mill, was arrested. Katsutaro had come to the village roughly 10 years prior, and after a brief stint working at the local liquor store, opened his own water mill. 
He was known around town as a hard worker and a family man with a wife and child, and he was well liked by all. So much so that many villagers struggled to believe that it could have been Katsutaro behind it all. Although the nickname Liver Thief Katsutaro also soon began to spread. During interrogations, police uncovered that Katsutaro had been approached by a 50-year-old man from the Osaka area who asked him to procure a liver for him so that he might cure his illness. He offered to pay Katsutaro a handsome sum for his efforts, and the remuneration was so much that Katsutaro couldn't refuse. He soon realised there was good money in selling livers on the black market, and so he continued his horrifying business on the side. But Katsutaro's confessions were also inconsistent, muddying matters. At one point, he claimed to have only killed the 48-year-old woman. Another time, he claimed that he only intended to attack the 32-year-old and not actually kill her. He also claimed to have dried the livers at his water mill and then the crows ate them, so he was unable to sell them. Police started to doubt whether there really was any 50-year-old from Osaka who had made such a request to Katsutaro. But either way, what he had done was horrifically cruel and, in the eyes of the law, had to be punished. Katsutaro underwent trial and, ultimately, was sentenced to death, which was carried out in Tokyo prison in June 1908, just shy of three years from the date of the first incident. And so marked the end of liver thief Katsutaro's reign of terror. But what do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.